Okay, um, when we did the health class yesterday, restoring the old past, there were some things I went back on the video and realized that I left out. So I want to cover those this morning. Welcome everyone. Um, I said no disrespect of the spirit of prophecy will be expected. What I meant to say was no disrespect will be accepted. I had said expected by mistake. I forgot to give the other definition of disease. I believe Brother Tony was talking about this a bit. Well, disease, yes, disease. Well, that's that's a doctor. Is an effort. Does anyone know the same? A disease is an effort of nature to free the system. From conditions, that would be all your diseases and sickness, from conditions that result from what? Violation. From violation of the laws of health. Okay? And that also is in Ministry of Healing. Page 127, paragraph 1. So, that is the definition of disease. It is, I also forgot to give the quote showing that sickness is a violation of either natural or spiritual law, and I would like to read it. It's in Health on Diets and Foods, page 121, paragraph 2. And it tells us the following. Let me make sure I have the right quote. Page 121, paragraph 2. Okay, here it is. These lessons are for us. There are conditions to be observed by all who would preserve health. All should learn what these conditions are. And that's one of the reasons we're going to be doing these classes. The Lord is not pleased with ignorance in regard to his laws. What does the Bible say? My people are destroyed for lack of, knowledge. lack of knowledge. The Lord is not pleased with ignorance in regard to his laws, either natural or spiritual. We are to be workers together with God for the restoration of health to the body as well as to the soul. So God has natural laws. He has spiritual laws. A violation of either can cause sickness and disease. Um, point number four. When I was referring to the glory of God not being a reason for sickness, back in the days of Jesus, there was sickness that was for the, specifically for the glory of God. Remember they said who sinned? The father didn't sin. The mother didn't sin. The child didn't sin. That's not the case today. We learned last night that... All sickness is due is a violation of the laws of health. It's due to sin. She says it is a sin to be sick. So that doesn't mean that God cannot be glorified in that sickness. Because if somebody violates the laws of health, then they find out about the laws of health, apply them, and have their health restored, who gets the glory? Amen. So when I said that yesterday, but the two causes of disease is because of violation of natural laws or spiritual laws. It's not to give glory to God. Back in the days of Job, back in the days of the blind man, those things happened, Lazarus. It was for the glory. But we're, it's not that way today. We're living in a time, just like in the days of Jesus, they ate fish. We don't eat fish today. There was things done back then. God's not working. Jesus touched. They were healed. That type of healing isn't being done today because of the counterfeit that Satan is using. You guys understand what I'm saying? Okay, amen. We are told in Councils on Health, page 37, paragraph 2, it is a sin to be sick, for all sickness is the result of transgression. So it's, if it says all sickness is a result of transgression, do you understand why I'm saying it's not for the glory of God today? Excuse me. 
This is page 37, paragraph 2. It is a sin to be sick, for all sickness is a result of transgression. Number five, when I gave the remedy for a substitution of Gatorade and Pedialyte yesterday, for when someone has vomiting or, or loose stools, I forgot to give you the remedy to stop the vomiting and to stop the loose stools. So, let me just write it. I gave you the remedy to replace the electrolytes, but bomb, okay, let's put remedies for vomiting. <laughs> okay, vomiting. Any ideas what I'm going to tell you for this one? Come on, people. Come on. Never get to one to two tablespoons of activated what? Charcoal. That's right. In water, you don't really want to give it in juice, especially if they're having vomiting. You want to give them clear fluids, water. Now, you can do this, do every, let's say, oh, I'm sorry, you guys are from mercy. I'm putting the cue for every, do every, Two hours if necessary. This is for this is for adults. Children I would do half. This normally works the first shot and there's a period called a reflux period. It's a gag reflux. You earl and earl and earl but then there's a point you can't for a few minutes. That's when you take it and then it'll stay. Some of it will be absorbed. Now here's how charcoal works. Charcoal will go in the stomach and it'll say, hmm, I think you're pretty poisoned. I'm gonna expel the poison from you. And you may, you may, uh, you know, vomit. But then it may say, no, you're okay. We'll stay inside. So there are cases where it can cause someone to vomit. But once they do, that's it. They're not gonna do it again. Charcoal is good for pregnancy because when I was pregnant with my firstborn, the hospital gave me charcoal with lime juice. Okay, now for loose stools. This is an excellent, excellent remedy. You want carrot powder mixed with, anyone know what you mix it with? Milk. No milk. Mixed with. Applesauce. Just mix it to the consistency where it's not too thick. Probably a little more applesauce than carrot powder. And this is excellent. This combination is so great. And I've heard of, about this for years, and then I noticed in the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia, they both tell you carrot powder and they tell you applesauce, but they don't tell you to mix them. But this is a great remedy. Another thing, if somebody's having an upset stomach, you guys heard of the Brat Diet? Are you familiar with the Brat Diet? Yeah. Tony, what does B stand for? Well, bromelain. In, in medical science, what do they, what's the B for? Bromelain. No, we're bread. talking bread. But you said bromelain, I'm going to research that. But in the medical field, they tell you bread. Whole wheat bread. Okay, R is rice. What kind of rice? Brown rice. A, anyone know? Apples. <laughs> apples. The reason why they have to do applesauce with this is so you can combine it. But the whole apples is really the best. And then T is, I'm sorry, this isn't bread. This is bananas. Forgive me. Banana. This is toast. Toast and tea. Herbal tea. Not the Lipton tea. Not the green tea. Not the chai tea. Not the white tea. Not the, because those are full of 400 poisons. You want herbal tea. And peppermint and chamomile are excellent for the stomach. Let me put that here. 
peppermint, and chamomile. These are soothers of the stomach, as is olive oil. The prophet of the Lord says it will soothe an upset stomach. What if I'm using it carbonate like say ginger root? There's many things. I'm, I'm just talking about like the most common that they use today for the upset stomach. Even doctors are telling people, this is very popular now, chamomile, but ginger's good for the upset stomach too. Um, okay, so you have that down? Yeah. All right. So we're going to erase this. Oh, and guess what the prophet of the Lord says is good for constipation? Olive oil. Olive oil. Excellent. My son was, when he was a baby, he's 20 now. Um, he'll be 21 in January. He, um, he had colic really bad, and the lady across the street gave him olive oil on his gums and manzanilla tea, which is chamomile. He had cried for 17 hours straight. We went to the doctors, everything. They gave me gas X, nothing worked. The moment she did that, within five minutes, he stopped to crying. So I thought, wow. And then, that was at the same time I was coming into the Adventist church. Isn't God good? Then I learned about remedies. I started learning about remedies a year later. So I had remembered what she did so the Lord was preparing me. He was showing me back then that this stuff works. When I started learning, it connected. In in the olive oil. Okay, she says if we put lemon in the olive oil, it will cut the taste. And lemon and oil, along with lime, is excellent for gallstones and stuff. It's a great drink. Okay, number six. I said yesterday that 95% of American soil produce uh, soybeans. 95% is genetically modified. I have to correct myself. I went and did some research. It's 95% worldwide, but it's 85% in America. Still large amounts, 85%. But let me read a little bit about genetically modified soybeans. Uh, let's see, it says the hazards of genetically modified soy. It's in everything we eat. And you see little mice? They tested these mice. What a picture. It says a, a disturbing development was the discovery of hair growing in the mouth of the animals that took part in the experiment of the soy. It says they noticed quite a serious effect when we selected new pairs from their cubs and continued to feed them. These pairs' growth rate was slower and reached their sexual maturity slower. When we got some of their cubs, we formed the new pairs of the third generation. We failed to get cubs from these pairs, which were fed the GM food stuff. So eventually, it stops the reproduction. It says some of these pouches contain single hairs in these mice. Others, thick bundles of colorless or pigmented hairs, so hairs can grow in your mouth from the genetically modified stuff. 